Exercise 13. The following two events occurred for Tankwell Company on October 31, 2011, the end of its fiscal year, and we're asked to prepare the adjusting entries that the company must record for these events as of the end of October. Letter A states that Tankwell rents a building from its owner for $3,100 per month. By a prearrangement, the company delayed paying October's rent until November 5th. On this day, the company paid the rent for both October and November. To accrue the rent expense on October 31st, the journal entry is a debit to rent expense for $3,100 and a credit to rent payable. Letter B states that Tankwell rents space in a building it owns to a tenant for $1,000 per month. By prearrangement, the tenant delayed paying the October rent until November 8th. On this date, the tenant paid the rent for both October and November. So it looks like everybody's behind on their rent. On October 31st, to accrue the rental income, debit rent receivable, 1000 and credit rent earned. Requirement 2 states that assuming Tankwell does not use reversing entries, prepare journal entries to record Tankwell's payment of rent on November 5th and the collection of rent on November 8th from Tankwell's tenant. We eliminate the rent payable amount of $3,100 that had been accrued as of October 31st. Record November's rent as rent expense, $3,100, and credit cash, $6,200. So we're debiting rent payable for the prior month's rent, debiting rent expense for the current month's rent, and crediting cash for the payment of two months' rent. On November 8th, we collect two months' rent, debit cash for $2,000, credit rent earned for the current month's rent, November's rent of $1,000, and credit rent receivable for the prior month's rent, October's rent of $1,000. It's a little bit tricky. We need to keep track of how much of the cash, either collected or paid, represents the current amount, rent expense or rent earned, or the prior amount, rent payable or rent receivable. Requirement 3 asks us to assume that the company does use reversing entries, so we're asked to prepare the reversing entries on November 1st and then the journal entries to record the payment of rent and the receipt of rent. The November 1st reversing entries are literally the opposite of our October 31st adjusting entries, so rather than debiting rent expense and crediting rent payable, we reverse it, debiting rent payable and crediting rent expense. Similarly, we literally reverse the adjusting entry for the rent receivable. Rather than debiting rent receivable and crediting rent earned, we flip it around, debiting rent earned and crediting rent receivable. Now the trick here is to remember that rent expense and rent earned, our income statement accounts, have both been closed as of October 31st. So the beginning balance on November 1st is zero in both rent expense and rent earned. As a result of these reversing entries, we had a credit to rent expense, $3,100, and a debit to rent earned for $1,000. So at this point in time, we have abnormal balances in the income statement accounts. Expense accounts decrease equity and have a normal debit balance. To have a credit balance of $3,100 is abnormal but it's just a temporary situation. Similarly, rent earned, the revenue account, would have a normal credit balance. We have a debit balance of $1,000 in rent earned, the income statement account, which is abnormal, but it's just temporary. The reason it's temporary is that when we make our payment of two months rent, we don't need to keep track of how much was current months and how much was the prior months. All we do is debit rent expense for the entire amount and credit cash. When we post this to the T account, we have a credit of $3,100 combined with a debit of $6,200 brings us to a normal balance as of November 5th of $3,100. We have one month's rent sitting in rent expense. This is the same result we had when we actually had not prepared reversing entries. Similarly, when our tenant pays us on November 8th, the journal entry is a debit to cash for the entire amount, 2000 and a credit to rent earned for 2000 Once this journal entry is posted to our T account, crediting rent earned for 2000 
we combine the debit balance of 1000 with a credit of 2000 bringing us to a normal credit balance in the revenue account of $1,000. We have one month of expense sitting in the expense account and one month of revenue in the revenue account. So reversing entries are optional. If a company chooses to use reversing entries, they would reverse any adjusting entry that increases the balance in an asset account or increases the balance in a liability account. Adjusting entries that decreased an asset or decreased a liability would not be reversed.